What if love was the foundation of every lesson we imparted? What if teaching was an act of love, an expression of divine compassion, just as it was for one of the greatest teachers this world has ever known, Jesus Christ? Today, we explore 10 key insights that illuminate this profound connection between love and teaching. Firstly, everything Jesus did throughout his earthly ministry was motivated by love. As true followers of Christ, we can be filled with this same love, a love pure and enduring. It is referred to as charity in the scriptures. As it is said in 1 Corinthians 13, 4, charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. Secondly, when this love resides in our hearts, we seek every possible way to help others learn of Christ and come unto Him. Love becomes the motivation for our teaching. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Thirdly, Jesus saw the divine potential in everyone He he looked beyond their earthly status or perceived shortcomings to their true essence, their divine potential. As it is written in Genesis 1.27, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. Fourthly, like Jesus, we need to see beyond the surface. Among those we teach, some may seem faithful, others uninterested, or even rebellious. 2 Corinthians 5, 7, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Fifthly, we must not make assumptions based on what we see, for the appearance rarely reveals the depth of a person's soul or the potential of their spirit. As said in 1 Samuel 16, 7, but the Lord said unto Samuel, look not on his countenance, on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Sixthly, the Holy Ghost can help us see what the Savior sees in each person. It can help us recognize their divine worth and potential. John 14, 26, But the Comforter, which Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Seventhly, as we begin to see others as the Savior sees them, we begin to love them the way He does. Romans 5, 5, And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Eighthly, this divine love transforms not just those we teach, but ourselves as well. It purifies our hearts, making us more Christ-like. Psalm 51.10, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Ninthly, as we strive to love and teach like Jesus, we become more than just teachers. We become instruments in the hands of God, helping to shape souls and transform lives. Philippians 2.13, for it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Finally, as we ponder each person we teach, let us consider how Heavenly Father and Jesus feel about each one. What might they see in them? How will these thoughts affect the way we teach? In summary, love is the foundation of teaching, as exemplified by Jesus Christ. Romans 8.28 and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. So let us remember, to teach is to love, and to love is to teach. For in the end, they are but two sides of the same divine coin. As it is written in 1 John 4:19, we love him because he first loved us.